Hi everybody, I'm Jim. And in this video, we'll walk you through the installation process for Dreamline's Infinity Z shower door. These same steps also apply to the tub version of the Infinity Z. Today we're installing the 56 to 60 inch satin black model in a 60 inch finished shower opening. Now, here are some important facts about this model that you'll want to take note of. The Infinity Z is a semi frameless sliding shower door. It consists of a fixed stationary glass panel and a sliding glass door. Note that each panel is a different size by design and the top and bottom guide rails are shorter than the model size. The door is also reversible so each glass panel can be oriented on either side depending on your layout. Let's review a few key points before we unpack the door and start the installation. The Infinity Z allows for one inch of out of plumb adjustment per side. Verify that your walls do not require more than that one inch out of plumb adjustment per side before proceeding. The door can be resized downward, by the way, up to four inches by trimming the top and bottom guide rails. Be sure the width of your finished shower opening falls within that four inch width range of the model you're installing. Your threshold must be level and pitched slightly inward. The threshold depth requirement or footprint of the door is one inch. Some shower enclosures include a hollow space between the outer surface and the wall preventing the proper installation of this door. Be sure the surfaces are solid and will be able to support the weight of the door. Irregular or uneven surfaces, rounded radius bottom corners, or the improper angle of sidewalls can result in serious problems for your installation. If you should run into any of these issues during these steps, please contact our customer support team by phone or by live chat for assistance. Please review the following safety reminders before we begin the installation of the Infinity Z shower door by Dreamline. Once you decide the door can be successfully installed in the opening, remove and inspect all parts except the glass from the box or boxes and thoroughly examine the manual. Be sure you have all the tools needed for installation. Measure the finished opening size at the top, middle and bottom to determine the finished cut length for the top and bottom guide rails. Use the smallest dimension and cut both rails to the same length. Measure from each end of the guide rail to the pre-drilled hole in the rail. The longer end is the door end. Cut only from the door end of the guide rails. Look for a decal there saying, cut this end only. Use this formula. Subtract 3 and 3 eighths inches from the finished opening width that you just obtained to get the finished cut size of the rails. Mark the rails on the door side according to your measurements and cut both rails using a chop saw or miter saw. If in doubt, refer to the dimensions in the installation manual. Remove and reinstall the stoppers on the cut ends of the guide rails. Measure in 3 and 1 8 inches from the cut ends. Make a mark and drill a new hole using a 1 8 inch drill bit. Reinstall the stoppers. Next, assemble the top and bottom guide rails to the side glass profiles using the one inch pan head screws, tightening them by hand into the screw bosses in the guide rails. A little dish soap on the threads will help them go in easier. Be sure the smooth sides of the top and bottom guide rails face out. Slide the wall profiles onto both sides of the frame, being careful to align the holes in both profiles, which are off center. You should be able to see through the holes in both profiles when done, and be sure they stay aligned for installation. Determine which side of the opening the door will go on, remembering that the cut end of the top and bottom guide rails is the door side. To switch the side the door is on, simply turn the entire frame upside down. Dry fit the unit in the opening. Make sure the unit is plumb on both sides and even at the bottom with the outside edge of the threshold. It must also be tight to the walls and to the threshold. Mark the inside edge of the wall profiles 
and mark the holes for drilling. Remove the unit from the opening. If a stud is present, drill a 3 16 inch hole up to the stud, then use a 1 8 inch bit to pilot the stud. If there is no stud, drill 5 16 inch holes and insert wall anchors. Unwrap and visually inspect the glass. Leave the protective corners on until it is necessary to remove them. Pay careful attention when installing the roller wheels onto the door glass. The handle holes on the door glass should face the wall. The wheels should face front, toward the outside of the shower, when placing the door glass into the opening. The bottom rollers include a push button that points up. The top rollers have a lock nut on top and a Phillips head adjustment screw on the bottom. Place the door glass into the shower area. Use protective padding and leave the corner protectors on to help prevent any damage to the glass. Apply silicone to the backs of both wall profiles and the underside of the bottom rail. Then place the frame back on the marks made in the opening. Check that the profiles are plumb and that the bottom is even from the threshold edge. Use an extension bit to drive the two inch pan head screws through the holes in the glass profiles and secure both wall profiles to the walls. Apply a small bead of silicone on the ledge of the bottom rail where the stationary panel glass will go. Install the panel glass, carefully sliding and inserting it into the side slot in the glass profile. Install the glass clips in the pre-drilled holes on the top and bottom rails with a Phillips screwdriver to hold the panel glass in place. Snap in the narrow edge of the V-shaped glazing vinyl between the back of the panel glass and the profile, starting from the bottom and working upward. Press it in firmly once in place and trim any excess. Install the towel bar on the fixed panel next using the gaskets on both sides of the glass. Hang the door glass by inserting the bottom roller wheels into the bottom guide rail. Pull up slightly on the door glass and insert the top roller wheels into the top rail. Use a Phillips screwdriver to adjust the top roller wheels only if the door is not tracking smoothly. Then install the caps on all four rollers. Be sure the frame and stationary panel glass assembly, which is still loose within the wall profiles, is centered within the wall profiles before securing the side profiles. Use a 1 8 inch drill bit to drill through the first layer of the wall profiles and glass profiles, two holes on each side. Secure the wall profiles to the glass profiles using the small pan head screws, washers, and caps. Next. Install the square shaped insert vinyl, flat side facing out, in the glass profile on the door side of the shower. Install the vinyl seals next. The shorter vinyl is installed on the exposed edge of the panel glass, with the soft fin pointing inward toward the door glass. The two longer vinyl seals attach to both sides of the door glass, with the fins pointing toward the outside of the shower. Install the handle on the outside of the door glass using the provided gaskets on both sides of the glass. Clean the area to be sealed, then caulk the entire perimeter with a good quality, mildew resistant clear silicone. Allow 24 hours for the silicone to cure before the shower is used. Hey, thanks for watching. If you're looking for a professional to install your newly purchased Dreamline shower door, we'd like to encourage you to take advantage of our Dreamline Certified Installer Network. Head over to dreamlineshowers.com and click Find an Installer. Search by location to find a list of certified installers closest to you. And for any additional questions, Dreamline customer support is happy to help. As always, Dreamline is your source for the ultimate shower door experience.